she would write to these gentlemen all over the country in promise of being their bride. She'd go to the railroad station and pick these men up and take them to her farmhouse. And then the uh, workers that she needed to do the farm work, um, she had orchard trees, uh, she had a big garden, so she could not do this by herself. So she would have these men. And it was during the Great Depression. People were out of work, people were starving to death. People were, they had the hobos that was traveling on the railroad tracks uh, and on the trains, going from city to city looking for work. And of course, she spread the word around, I'm looking for workers. And uh, these men would come to her farmhouse and she would work them till they needed to get paid. And she would kill them. There had been rumors for many, many years in Mex County that she chopped up these men and fed them to the hogs. She was the poorest person in the county. She had the fattest hogs in the county. And um, also many pregnancies that she had, she killed many, many babies. I do not know if she fed those babies to the hogs, uh, if she buried them on her property. What's up you guys? Chet Guthrie the Dream Poet here coming to you all with another rather spooky tale here for haunt season. And today guys, I am out here on a dirt road in Meigs County, Tennessee. To be more specific, it's Sims Road. And the name that this road is given, it starts out quite a ghastly tale. You see, it starts September 21st, 1886. You see, on this day, a woman by the name of Grace V. Sims is brought into the world. And this woman, by historical accounts, is perhaps the, one of the most wicked women of Appalachia, or better known as the Black Widow of Meigs County. You see, in order to start this tale, let us dial back to when she was at the age of 13. You see, Grace Sims, her mother died at a young age. And when her mother passed away, well, she was left more or less to tend to the farm. It was around 78 acres here just behind me that went all the way up to Brickle Ridge right over here, and that was their property. However, her dad, as her mother died young, he, well, did some things to Grace that um, a father should never do to a child he abused her he beat her and well for what some people often say she mistook his love as a father's love when he was doing some very sick and twisted things to her you see also in this area grace v sims she was also known for making moonshine, running moonshine in these mountains and these hills. And when her father died, she got the land, she got the property. But that's where this sick tale begins. This is where Grace V. Sims starts making moonshine. She starts running it and she starts being an alcoholic. Now on top of that, she is also prostituting herself out to other men. And as she is doing this while prostituting herself, she is also using this as blackmail to get back at these male suitors. 
In fact, um, the woman who wrote the book, A Tragedy and Ten Can Holler, this is what happened. Um, her grandfather had had an affair with Grace Sims, and that's what caused it. That's what caused the birth of her father, who was also a very troubled individual and led to her being very troubled as well. Now this is where the scary part begins. You see, Grace, she would also do write fraudulent checks. She would write fraudulent money orders and whatnot. But one of the things that she would do is that she would ride in as a mail order bride or sometimes she would take these vagabonds from town and they would bring her, they, she would bring them out to her farm to work for money. And in fact, as we're walking down this country road, here is the house of Grace Sims where she lived for all those years until she passed away in the 1950s. No, it was the 1930s that she passed away. But it is here in this house where after long work hour days, these men, these vagabonds, these men that she picked up from the railroad depot, they would want their money, they would want their marriage, but that wouldn't happen. As it is said in the ghost story, Grace Sims, she would drop arsenic in her suitor's food. And that's when they would die. And from there, they would disappear. Now, this is where the story gets strange. You see, these men would go disappearing and be unheard from or never heard from again. You would even have the brothers, cousins, uncles of these men trying to um, trying to find their uh, their uh, their cousin or their family member, all to no avail, until by story being told, it always seemed to be that the final place that they were spotted was at this house, which still stands to this day. Now, strangely enough, in this house there is a cupboard, and in this cupboard, this is where the uh, grandfather or this is where the father of uh, the woman who wrote the book Ten Can Holler. This is where uh, Grace Sims would put him in this uh, this big giant cupboard, lock the door, and give him nothing but uh, a few pieces of bread, a chicken wing, and not a whole lot. When she would go out and do these uh, these sexual acts, these prostitution rings, things, what have you. Anyway, it is believed that is why her father had become screwed up it was because he would be locked in that covered room when she would bring these suitors these men these mysterious strange men and this is where they would disappear and now as we're looking at the house we're going to go right up here and earlier on as i was talking there is mention of brickle ridge that i said which by the way it's that hill up there up on Brickle Ridge, it is said that a, um, a mentally handicapped cousin of Grace's, they would, she would make a game with him. After she would poison these suitors, these men, these vagabonds, it is said that she would make a game. She would tell them to take these bodies up to a giant hole on Brickle Ridge and dump them. And after, she would, after he would dump them, he would come back down and he would bury the, uh, the clothes right beside this barn here. And interestingly enough, I just saw a neighbor come down the road and she told me something that was rather scary. You see, you'll see these little goats right here. Well, in order to get those goats to go into that barn right there, they had to bless that barn. That's what she told me. That is scary enough. Um, but also behind me at this exact same barn in this field, it is said that the apparitions of these men can be seen walking back and forth in the yard. Back and forth, back and forth. However, their bodies were never found. And from what I've understood about this house, 
is that this house is not built like a normal house much like the cupboard that i mentioned there are also interesting pass or different or mysterious passageways throughout this house from what i understand and many people think this is how grace v sims got away with what she did so anyway you guys after we've seen this house we are going to go up to whispering pine cemetery or i should say whispering pine cemetery where grace sims is buried and now i'm not gonna lie this cemetery is very haunted and as recounted by one paranormal paranormal investigator here in this area it's not for the faint of heart so let's check it out now whispering pines is a very interesting cemetery um it doesn't really show up on a map but from what i noticed i believe it goes by another name and that is the old walnut grove cemetery and why i say that is this cemetery is very inaccessible it kind of goes all the way up until to the hills but uh the only way you can really get to this cemetery is if you had four wheel drive but I figured while we're walking up to the cemetery to Grace V. Sims grave, I figured I'd tell you all what happened and why perhaps maybe even that Grace V. Sims is still attacking people from the other side from her grave. You see, there was a paranormal investigator that came out here a few years ago. And when he and his wife got out here they started doing some paranormal investigating and while this man was standing at grace v sims grave whatever strange force that was there it rammed him like it pushed him to the ground like with a giant thud now his wife and the in-laws that were there they got him out of there they left that night but the next day this man this investigator he had a really bad bout of anger he forgot where he went forgot where he was and they like to believe that whatever this thing was that rammed him by grace v sims grave they believe it to be her spirit or a spirit of some sort also investigators have come out to this area before with equipment opuluses oculuses and some of the strange things that these entities have said one in particular one was i need and the investigator asked what do you need and it said soul after that happened they got out of there and here we are Here's the graves. Now you would not think a cemetery to be this far out in the middle of nowhere, but it is. In fact, some of these headstones, they're just rocks or memorial markers, which goes to show, you know, history has changed throughout the years. You know, way back when, you know when a person was buried and laid to rest well this is about the only way that they could do things was rocks crosses what have you and it's all up here on this hillside so telling how old some of these graves are some of them are a little bit worn like in ova or w davis august 28th 1879 July 24th, 1881, and there it is his wife, 1875 to 1893. So these graves out here, since this is no longer an active cemetery, these graves are well over 100 years old. And right up there in front of us, there's the headstone that we're looking for. 
It is perhaps one of the newest headstones here in this area, but this is the Sims head marker, the Sims headstone. And right here is the grave of Grace V. Sims and TH Father. And this is where it all happens. And I'm not gonna lie, I feel like something's been watching me and I've been getting this feeling that I'm unwelcome here. So we're gonna get back down to the car. Usually when I get feelings like this, it's, it's not a good sign. <laughs> I do not like being up here. Just when I get that headache feeling, I know that it's usually not a good sign. Um, but since we have talked about something that has delved a lot with, well, with child SA and child A or CA, um, if there's like anything that, if you know somebody who's like dealing with something like that, please call and make sure, or call and let people know. Cause that's just sad to see a child go through something like that so in the video below i'm going to put a number just in case if somebody notice, notices that something's going on and they want to say something about it but anyway guys this is going to be another vlog for another day a very spooky episode in the tale of probably the most wicked woman in appalachia so without further ado you guys this vlog is over.